seemed like a little bit of a sleepy start, and then you guys really just ramped it up there in the second. Was there any kind of message, or is that like a hey, we need to get our legs going? So I liked the way we were skating in the first period. I didn't like our decisions entering the offensive zone. So we slowed it down too much in the neutral zone, and then too many turnovers um, entering the offensive zone, like over the blue line, between the blue line and the hash marks, too much east-west play. So we were too many one and done, so we didn't spend enough time in the offensive zone. But I like the way we were skating, breaking the puck out, all that seemed to be fine. Um, so that was the message after the first. and we. We were quicker in the neutral zone, more quick ups, and guys skating and pouring onto the puck. And just like the better entries, better like chip floor checks that we came up with the puck more. And then we had a good ozone period too. The decision to s switch McKinnon and Middlestad after the first, was that just a case of using this game to experiment similar to what you did a couple years ago with your A little bit. I didn't like Max Lyme wasn't doing a lot. You know, they were part of the one and done's in the first period. And, you know, part of that is why go back to something that's exact same? Like Nico has not played with Middlestead yet, you know what I mean? So I thought, well, if I just flip those centers around, we might get a little boost out of, you know, both lines. And uh, yeah, we did. I think Nico and Middlestead, they scored their first shift together and had another one later. And obviously Matt got on the board late after that. So it just, it is experimenting, get them familiar with one another. It's a good game to do it because we had, you know, a comfortable at that point and you know also those lines weren't like clicking you know so you see a little frustration out of them too out of the nice during the game does that play into that out of name oh yeah or, yeah well they feel it right like they they know what they're used to normally doing on the ice and all those old time they'd spend the chances that they create and they had a lot of chances by the end of the game no question um, I just felt like they were just off a little bit tonight or you know, the game. How nice, is, how nice is it to have that flexibility again, you know, with your lineup that you can yeah, you gotta have it. it. If you're gonna win, you gotta have it. Yeah. And it's really nice. Can you put your finger on just the, the early goals that allowed, even though you guys play so strong, it seems pesky first two, three shots that the goal allowed. Yeah. No, I mean tonight I mean it just depends on the night. You know, sometimes they capitalize. I mean, you're gonna you're giving up scoring chances throughout the course of the game, right? Um, we we had that was a bad breakdown on that goal. We were we didn't get sorted out quick enough on the arrival in the D zone. They find we were slow down low, or slow up top, or slow down low again, and then the guy slipped to the back door, and we just like our awareness was poor. So, I mean, if you if if that's what that shift looks like and play looks like i think you have to expect to get scored on so but we had a couple of those in the third period too that we kept out of our net so i mean teams are getting dirty on us but we stuck with it and got better all right you um, you also you put wood and Trolls back together yep. and that might have been i'm guessing that was one of the better games i like i liked their game tonight a lot yeah we've, we've been talking back and forth as a, with their line and I mean, I feel like they should be playing together. They get along great off the ice. We've seen them play some great games, you know, or great stretches of games. Uh, when we went out east, they were our best line consistently for a while. And, you know, so I know that they have it in them and they just have to work through some issues. And we talk about a few things, but great conscience on the defensive side tonight. Physical went to the net hard penalties, banged in a rebound goal. You know, I, I like that line a lot tonight. Do you, guys, do you see guys who don't get along off the ice? Not well, no, but they're like inseparable. <laughs> <laughs> Val obviously had his off ice issues almost a year ago in the playoffs and then yeah. comes in this year, has a strong start, has to leave for a couple of months, comes back, he's yeah. kind of kept going and now he's got a career high in goals. I just, I guess, could you just kind of like, how do you put that all together to see him this well, he's been improving every year. I mean, I, I don't know if he's, if he's healthy, he feels great. Like he went through some injury troubles last year, right? The, the things that keep you out of, your, out of the lineup tend to take away your rhythm, you know? Nagging injuries take away your rhythm and your ability to play the way you want to play. And he's fully healthy. He's a more experienced guy. He plays with really good line mates every night. Um, you know, so it doesn't surprise me that he's hitting career highs. It's been a journey for him, no question. You know, it takes 
sure it takes a lot of discipline to you know stay focused on what he has to do and uh, hopefully he can continue to do the same things he's been doing throughout the course of the year for us. Talked a little bit about Casey this morning, but it seems like almost every game he's got a different lineman. He seems to adjust like it's nothing. Like does that just speak to the IQ of a player like that? That he can yeah, play with Yeah, well, he is a high IQ player. He is an intelligent hockey player, especially when you like when you um, look at how he maneuvers around the ice on the offensive side of things. He's a committed defender though too. But um, you know, I feel like the wingers that we're playing with, whether it's Jordan, Lekin, and Val, Brandon, like those guys are all really smart players and bring a little bit different skill set to the table. But it's still within the structure of our game, so. He's able to find guys in open ice. Everyone sort of should be moving into similar spots. <laughs> so he, but he's doing a nice job distributing the puck. There's no question. Coach Miko, you talked about uh, how the games are now, you know, obviously meaning a lot more towards the end of the season. And do you think that has like something, a lot to do with how his intensity has kind of just amped up the last couple of weeks? Yeah, Miko, yeah. yeah, I mean, he's been playing hard for us. I mean, they, all of our leaders know how important it is, like the message we're sending that we're fine tuning our game. So it starts with them. You know, they're the guys that are out there the most. They're out there in all the key situations. They're playing against the other team's top guys every night. They have to lead the charge when it comes to like the commitment of our game and, and the details that we're talking about. It. Otherwise, no one else will follow suit. So they, they, they have taken charge and they've ramped up the intensity. And, you know, that's what we've come to expect from them. And Miko's certainly one of those guys. And he's getting rewarded for it too now. Look at his offensive production over the last little bit's been off the charts. Last few ones, go ahead, sir. Um, Coach Hugh Johnson, Denver Gazette. You uh, see the stat in the third period um, for Nathan McKinnon, 33 straight home games with a point, rubbing shoulders with uh, Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about what it's like as a coach to uh, be coaching a part of history with a guy who's uh, rubbing up against a great one. Well, I love I love coaching the guy because he brings an intensity and a. Um, a drive to his game that's like unmatched in my opinion in the league right so um, this is just the, the streak is a result of all the hard work and dedication that he brings to the game on a nightly basis so there's not a guy on that bench that didn't know he hadn't had a point yet. <laughs> he got it everyone was pretty happy you know and you can see like he wants it you know like he's you know, a little ornery on the bench in the start of the second period when he when he hadn't got a point yet, you know? So it's this a pressure that he puts on himself and you know, he gets the one and then relaxes a little bit and all of a sudden the then the second point came a little bit easier for him, you know. So he's gotta stay in the moment, keep playing his game and hopefully the streak continues, but everyone's rooting for him. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Thank you.